Whopper, 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 Junior Double, Triple Whopper, Flame Grill Taste with Perfect Toppers. I want this day. How do you know that? Happy Have it your way. Oh, God. You rule. How did you know every word to that? You looked it up, bro. Oh, I was like, bro, if you knew that, actually, because I'm like, as soon as I get past the Whopper, 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 I'm like, where the fuck? I was like, I tried like, not to laugh while I was singing it too. It was hard, bro. I always go something whopper. If you're not filled in, if you're listening, didn't know what the fuck is going on, you didn't pay attention to uh, the weekend wild card oh, of if, football. If you don't, if you don't know what we were just fucking doing, you don't watch football. Yeah, yeah. I, I was mean, gonna say like, it's not the wild card weekend. It's like the past. It's, two yeah, but months. I feel like wild card because you were so stuck to the TV. That's Bro, all I mean, you fucking hurt. When the Demar Hamlin injury happened, the first commercial after that Whopper, was bad. Whopper, Whopper, I'm like, that oh, was bad timing. Oh, that was bad timing. But all right, hot take. <laughs> I don't even know if it's a hot take. Burger King is obviously below McDonald's and Wendy's. No, no. It's below Wendy's. It's not below McDonald's. I think Burger King is by far the worst. I think you're on crack. You think Burger King is better than McDonald's and Wendy's? No, it's not better than Wendy's. I said it's in between. It goes Wendy's, Burger no. King, McDonald's. No. Look, Wendy's- man, I'm not a like fast food expert or nothing like that, but like if I had to rank just off of like perception, McDonald's has to be one because it's like the king of fast food. Oh. And then like probably the Chick-fil-A count. Chick-fil-A oh, Chick-fil-A count. counts. It's one. Well, I count. think those are the top two. Does the BK song, though, bump it up at all? No, I think it yeah. deteriorates, if anything. Oh, it deteriorates. I'm embarrassed no, to be doesn't. a Burger King supporter right now. Mm-hmm. I'm absolutely embarrassed to be one. All right, so if you I've been ranking, a BK stand my whole life, if, bro. If you're ranking them and Chick-fil-A's in it, where do we rank the fast food? Chick-fil-A easily won. Okay, Sonic is slept on. I've it been don't. saying that. Yeah. I've been saying that. I don't have Sonic it. enough. Sonic. Chick-fil-A Yo, won. Free Corn Dog Day? <sighs> Chick-fil-A won. Yeah. Wendy's two. Okay. Is Wendy's egg good? Wendy's, Wendy's fire. fire. Baconator, fire. son the of Baconator. The spicy nugs, bro. Spicy nugs, four yep. for four. This, this man on, knows. Bro. Adam don't eat fast food, but he knows shake. this shit. Yeah, oh, it? well, it's, not, it's not a shake. Yeah. It's a frosty. <laughs> it's a frosty. Well, yeah. Oh, he already fucked it off. Yeah, come on now. Yeah, you yeah, had yeah, me yeah. for a little bit. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. The Burger King, though, it's the only one that, that gives you a little crown after you eat. You know what I'm saying? Yo, yeah. when you were a kid and you put that crown on, you feel special. It was dope because like at McDonald's, you got the little toy. Nah. At Burger yeah. King? But McDonald's, McDonald's did well was they had the little, like, the Happy Meal that was fun, the little box. Yeah, but the and problem, they always had and, a playpen. And, and, you, and you got McDonald's. the toy. What was the toy called? The Happy Meal toy. The Happy Meal toy? Happy toy. Happy meal toy? toy. But that cool oh, one was like the Tony Hawk, like the little pro skater. Yeah. Yeah. They, had they, had, they had Rugrats one, one time. I was all for that. They yeah, but see, the problem, you in South Florida, we had it differently. They didn't just hand out the crown. They handed out the mask yeah, they sometimes. Out like, a, like a gram of weed or some shit with it? Or well, what no, in South Florida? No, no, no. The, the, the Burger King <laughs> mask. Little, so little, 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 be, little baggie of cocaine. All right, so where are we putting Burger King? <laughs> <laughs> I, where I, are we putting Burger King? This. Where are we putting Burger King? Chick-fil-A one, uh, Wendy's two. McDonald's. McDonald's three, Burger King four? If you want to do that, that's your ranking. I don't even want Burger King on the fucking list. Burger King's trash. I don't know. Just give me the crown. I'll wear the crown. Somebody give me the crown, I'm going to wear it. The Bacon King? The song is the only reason we're having this conversation. So let's just move on. That's a good point. All right, have a Super good Wild Card Weekend. Remember, we're back. Hey, caps off. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. All right, Matan is away on vacation, so it's just us three. We will be Mexico. back. Mexico. Mexico. Watching a little Grateful Dead for like, what, yeah. four shows? Super three shows? deadhead. Pretty cool. Super deadhead. He, Matan, his dad, cl- he says his dad claims not to be a... He's on the trip with his dad, by the way, but his dad like claims to not be a deadhead, but like... I think this is their fourth show they've gone to in yeah. the last calendar year. If you've gone to Mexico... If you went to Mexico to see three Grateful Dead concerts in a row... In the same weekend, you're a deadhead. Yeah, yeah. The, oh, but every show they play different songs. They don't play the same. Well, he's a, he also loves John head. Mayer. He went for John Mayer. Yeah. Gravity. Speaking of which, actually, I have nothing to do. I just dropped a nut on my nuts. Oh, so I'm eating cashews right now. So I was like yeah. thinking about it. And I was yeah, like, you did big pop up. It's kind of yeah. awkward. All right, Jags yeah. Chargers. Okay, oh, oh, Jags going right Char- into it. Yeah, I want to <laughs> jump right into it. Did the Jags Chargers game tell you? Was it? Or shall I rephrase? Jags Chargers, right? Okay, so Jags Chargers? Jags Chargers. Which Just game? one more time. What game is that, though? Chargers, Chargers versus oh, the Jags. Oh, yeah, 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 in yeah, Jacksonville. Yeah. In Jacksonville. The one with the Jaguars and the, and the San Diego Chargers. Yeah. Los yeah. Angeles. San Di- yeah. Oh, Los Angeles, right. So Jags Chargers or Chargers Jags. Okay. Does the game say more about the Jags or the Chargers? I think oh. the Jags, bro. Honestly. like that, that comeback? To come back down from 27, that shows like that you have a guy in Trevor Lawrence that Facts. doesn't matter. He's having the worst game of his professional career, maybe his whole career ever in football. Mm. And he says, it doesn't matter. He's like, you saw him on the sideline after four picks. He's just chilling. He's like, whatever. They they have that touchdown before the half. And then you have Peterson come in and talking. He's like, hey, just chip away, chip away. Like, we're all good. And they fucking do it. Well, that's what I was concerned about with Trevor throwing the four interceptions in the first half. 
a lot of those. It was like three in the first quarter, I think, right? Yeah. And I'm worried him being a young quarterback. Obviously, he's been under the lights before at Clemson, like the biggest lights. But the NFL playoffs is a different atmosphere. And I was scared that he would hang his head. You you see a lot of you see top quarterbacks hang their head after mm. stuff like that. Like Kirk Cousins, I don't think would be able to come back for something like that. Fuck no. But Trevor Lawrence just stayed in there like nothing had happened. He you could see him just rallying the troops. Now, I don't know if he's the best leader because we saw him give that pregame yeah, speech last was, week. Uh, it was kind of bad. But I think just his composure, his poise, his 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 ability to be able to just Stay together and you know keep keep that confidence as as they're building that comeback really showed a lot and that's what you're talking about with the number one overall pick the best prospect since like Peyton that's, Manning that's or whatever something you can't teach bro can like, I say at both all. though can I say it showed me a ton about the Chargers and it showed me a ton about the Jets what did it show you about the Chargers that you didn't already yeah, know we it all we've known their chokers that, it, but that it, it proved what we knew about the Chargers. It proved, yes, they fired Joe Lombardi at this proof. point, making him the scapegoat. But cool. if anything, the Chargers were going on a run, Bro, but at the not. same time, it showed us that, A, Justin Herbert maybe is not in that upper echelon because he can't close out games. I don't care what you say about the, This game put Trevor Lawrence is. above Justin exactly. Herbert for me. It showed us that we knew what the Chargers were all along. We knew that they didn't, regardless of how well Justin Herbert played, they didn't have the capacity, the coaching or whatever you want to call it, to get over the hump, yeah, I mean, as is. And then on the other hand, when you look at the Jags, it showed me that maybe they are a team that can make a run. Maybe they know, are a team with a young quarterback, a championship pedigree, head coach, a ton of talent around that that quarterback, and an overperforming defense that could potentially make a run and go into Kansas City that you know could do why some this, damage. You know why this loss is also on Brandon Staley like very heavily, too? It's because last week, right, week 18, that game did not fucking matter against the Broncos. And you play Mike Williams, who you know is a little bit injury prone. He gets hurt. He makes a difference in that game against the Jags. They yeah, probably dude, win if he plays. You're up by 27, bro. I don't give a fuck who you have at. You, like, no, but you know what I mean? Point, if they have Mike Williams, they probably lead. end up winning that game still. Like, nah, somehow. I disagree with that. I don't think Mike Williams makes enough of a difference on offense. If anything, I point more enough, to Justin Herbert. Enough to Herbert. win a game that was decided on a last-second field goal. Y'all got Justin Herbert, up 27, missed a wide-open receiver. At that point, maybe they were up like 20 or something. But missed a wide-open receiver in, in, in the goal line. Uh, and he was in the end zone. And... Like, those are throws that you have to make to close out, to step on somebody's neck to really end the game. And Herbert couldn't do that. So, it's on Herbert. It's still on Staley. Obviously, Lombardi's gone now. So, uh, the, the Chargers are what we thought they were. They choke artists, and they have been for the past, like, yeah. decade. Based off of that Justin Herbert performance Saturday night, where do you put him in the QB rankings? Like, leaving the season, I guess. I think he's, for, he's, he's like, like 7 to 10. Yeah, he's top 7. 7 to 10. But do, do you think this bumped him down? Nah. Out, of, out of all like the young younger nah. quarterbacks, I I'd put Burrow above him. I put Lamar above him. I, I would have never put Trevor Lawrence. I would have never have put Trevor Lawrence above him. But if Trevor Lawrence comes out and has a good game against Kansas City, I don't even care win or lose. Yeah, I'll put him above him. I I, I think he proved literally beating Justin Herbert in the playoffs that he's better than him. But he also had three ints, four ints, four ints. If you bounce back with four Herbert, touchdowns in the next half, Herbert had one touchdown, right? Yeah, yeah. I and like an I was hearing people talking about like they he, he should have had more touchdowns. Well, they're up twenty seven to zero. I don't care who scores a touchdown if you, if you just win the game. Yeah, like you have one touchdown. The and team didn't even team score a fucking field. touchdown after that. They only ran the ball twenty three times. That's a big How issue. How many? What did he throw? Like forty five times. He threw forty three times. And granted, for him, them throwing forty three times is a byproduct of what so many people on social media that named him the social media quarterback used as an example because his volume. Gave him opportunities to put up so many more yards, so many more passing touchdowns. So, again, Justin Herbert, I think, possesses everything to be an elite quarterback. But to wrap up, is it Jags or Chargers? What did it show me more? It showed me more about what the Chargers are or how far they really are, maybe, than anything else. I don't know. I, the, I just – something about Trevor Lawrence, the way that he responded to that, that man is a special fucking quarterback. You don't see that very often. You know what it reminds me of a lot is last year when Joe Burrow was facing adversity in the playoffs and everything don't like that. I'm telling you, this is this it's the same script, different team, different year. You think the, the same, Jags the and the Bengals of last year are in the exact same script? Exact same type of team, okay. same kind of shit. Here's why. You have to win in week 18, right? That's essentially a playoff no, game. Okay. You have to win to go in the playoffs. Yeah, that's you don't a playoff win, game. The stakes were as playoff game, but the Tennessee Titans are nowhere near what the Kansas City Chiefs were last year. No, what I'm not doing? saying that that... Here, just let me... Get let my him out. All right. I don't want so to. So that's basically a playoff game. You have to win or in, lose or out, basically, right? Yes, Goes in, wins game. that game. That's a huge dub. And you go into here, you're down 27. Everyone's like making fun of you, fucking posting memes left and right on Twitter saying Match. you're a choke artist, you suck this, blah, 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 all this stuff. 
You come back, you win that game somehow. And now you're going into Kansas City after two. I'm going to call it two playoff games because the winning in is not technically playoffs, but to make it's the It's a playoff. playoff. It's essentially you it's win, the same concept. You win two games that you probably weren't supposed to win. Maybe the one against the Titans because Josh Dobbs is playing you. I don't agree. But you go in. You're going into Kansas City. Everyone right now is counting out the Jaguars. They're like, you know what? Great playoff win, guys. But you guys are going to go into Kansas City and get smoked. That's what everyone was saying about Joe Burrow last no, year. Right. Going in. Yes, everyone bro, Adam, was saying that. Adam doesn't understand what hindsight is, bro. Obviously, now we're looking back and we're like, oh, the Bengals were good. At the but time, at the you time, have, we you have to like, put yourself at like that Mahomes position. Like, can't you shut out. the hell up? At you don't the, let us talk. No, I don't want to let you talk because at the time, Joe Burrow and the Bengals had just gone into the number one seed, Tennessee Titans, and beat them. And Joe Burrow went off. So we had far more confidence in what the Bengals we could do. We never believed in the Tennessee the, Titans, bro. No one ever. We no never believed in the Tennessee Titans. The Titans are really the one seed over the if you believed in them, regardless if you believed in them, they were the number one seed in the AFC. They had a bye. That is credit. The Jaguars just beat a Chargers team, which you hated all fucking year, and you and I tried to talk I picked the Chargers to win this week, though. So did I, but you also always said Brandon Staley's a Costco worker. You were right. <laughs> But yeah. clearly Joe Lombardi's the scapegoat here. But that's not the point. My point is here is regardless if you say a win and in is the same, the, if you compare side by side, the resume that the Bengals had going into that Kansas City game versus what the, the Jags have going into Kansas City are far different. Now, you could point to the storylines as to Trevor Lawrence, second year quarterback, making the leap. They have talent around him, good coach, all that shit. Great. But what I'm talking about is resume. And as for resume, the Bengals had a far better resume going into Kansas City than the Jaguars do. And that's why I do not believe the Bengals and Jaguars conversation is the same. They're not 1-1. One, one. There may be 3-1 to one ratio, 2-1 to one ratio. They no. have very similar variables, but they are not the same. That Bengals team of last year is better than the Jaguars team of this year. Well, yeah, because hindsight, they made the fucking Super Bowl. Yeah, what he, if the Jaguars make the talent. Super Bowl? Then, then we can have a different conversation. Yes, and we're having that conversation right now. Saying, as of this when the time... Bengals, when the Bengals beat Tennessee... It was not crazy to say that the Cincinnati Bengals could beat Kansas City. It, yes, it was. No, it was not. Sorry, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, it it was, not. I'm, I'm, I'm low-key a Bengals fan. I go to a bunch of their fucking games all the time for work. I like the Bengals a lot. They were great last year, but no one when they were going into Kansas City last year, I can literally call up Yaz right now. You want me to call the biggest Bengals fan we know? And I guarantee it'll be like everyone was fucking counting us out. No one thought Everybody we were going to win was, that game. Everybody was, bro. Everybody was counting them out. Also, I just looked. You want were, me to call? I'll call her ass right the, now the and Bengals, she'll prove you wrong. The Bengals went 10-7 and seven last year. The Jags went 9-8 and eight this year. So the record's pretty similar. What, what you looking up there, Big Paul? I was trying to see their odds for, for, for that game of last Re year. Records are pretty similar. Oh, dude, the Chiefs were favorites by a mile yeah. last year. Yeah. Dude, nobody realistically thought the Bengals would beat the That's Chiefs. That's not my point. My point is... That is your you, point. No, my point is what the... Ba I feel far more confident of the Bengals going into that game than I do of the Jaguars because going into this Because in hindsight, game. they made no, the Super Bowl. because they beat the number one seed. Bro, this guy... This they guy, beat the bro. number one seed. All right, well, anyway, I just... And they had Lipe, already beaten the Chiefs. Lipe, you and agree. they had already beaten Second the Chiefs. Second-year quarterback, first page. overall pick. Two guys that are like so crazy they make talents. Out. So then make out. I will later. Later, bro. I'm we'll right. You're camera. wrong. No, you're not. All right, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I mean, bro, Dolphins, I, Bills. What, you got one more thing to say? Just, I just don't know why, why you got some Trevor Lawrence disrespect. I don't, know why, he's, Trevor I don't Lawrence. know why he's so mad about this. It's very easy to say the Bengals, yeah, were good last year in hindsight because they made the Super Bowl. But at, at the time, before we, like, bro, we didn't know like, the Bengals would win. I'm mad because I like to be right. I just if I if I scream louder, it makes me sound more legit. Okay. Yeah, he's he's like the. He's I love Trevor Lawrence too, by the way. Do not yeah, do not dog, put me man. in the class. I just said I'll take him over Justin Herbert. Like don't yeah. not don't put me in the class of people that hate Justin Herbert. I mean Trevor Lawrence. I'm just saying. To compare them side by side, it's Give not fair. Give some respect to Duval, bro. Give some respect to the Ooh, Bengals of last year and what they did. Oh, I respect the Bengals, bro. Dolphins, Bills. Can the Bills hang? Based off well, of that can, game against the Dolphins. Can they hang? Yes. Can they hang? They, they I'm can, scared. They can All hang because they have a lot of talent. But like, can they put out? Like, are they dominant enough to where we what we thought they were going to be heading into the I season? Mean, Maybe even like early through midway of the season? No, they're not because they've been they've been sputtering lately. They haven't been looking like their best self. They've been inconsistent. Josh Allen has been turning the ball over. The defense can't close anybody out. So the Bills aren't a scary team, but they can hang with anybody. I mean, like if you're a Bills fan, are you scared? Because I'm terrified if I'm mm -hmm. a Bills fan because I'm, of Josh Allen's turnovers. Right I'm scared because of the standards. Because yeah. the standards for the Bills are Super Bowl or bust. They came into the year favorites. I'm scared also because when you have a team, when you have a team like the Dolphins who are not necessarily going to convert on all those turnovers, it's a little different. If you're going up against the Bengals, you're going up against the Chiefs. Those are teams that are going to convert those turnovers. Right. So the Bills almost caught a break. The Bills got lucky in a way. I say that the Dolphins lost the game. The Bills did not beat them. 
That's my opinion. I feel like that's kind of a lot of the way. Like the Bills, the, the last I don't know five, six weeks, whatever yeah, it's been, have not than. had one convincing win to me. It's, like yeah. in the moments that you need, where you're up seventeen against the Dolphins, right? You score one more touchdown. Uh, can't talk right there. You score one more touchdown, and that game is virtually over. Yeah, Skyler Thompson's not coming back down twenty four. Steady turns the ball over. It's some shit like that. I feel like the Bills keep doing that where they cannot put the dagger and just stick it even further in and then end the game. If I'm a Bills fan, I'm definitely worried. And also, like, if I look at Bills versus Bengals, if the the Bills lose, what's the fallout look like if you're a Bills fan? I think it's, in my opinion, it's pretty obvious is that you just need more help for Stephon Diggs. Dawson Knox is an all right, you know, he's top 10-ish tight end. Gabe Davis should not be a wide receiver too, I don't think. Their running back's not that great. Like, is that what you really need though? Because yeah, I don't think I don't I don't because think it's, what not, else do you not need? this year. Because last year, and, and two years ago, when the the Bills were really good, they had one of the best receiving cores in the league. Cole Beasley was the best slot in the league he for was sure. Stephon Diggs is certified top five wide receiver in the league. So they yeah, this year they're a little bit worse at receiver, but yeah, I don't they were that. better would, then, and help, they still couldn't get. I would hope they still had Von Miller on defense I don't, with that I don't pass think it's a rush. Specific but. Person, I think uh, a better wide receiver too would help. I think it's actually a philosophical change. I think you need to commit more to the run. Now, Von, they obviously lose Von Miller, but it feels yeah. like you know Josh Allen is someone that can turn the ball over. You're putting him in so many opportunities as the amount of times that he throws a game where obviously the variables are pointing to him being able to turn the ball over. I, so if I you want to like... limit the mistakes, maybe run the ball more. And they have yet to have a bell cow. I'm not saying you need a bell cow to win, but they've yet to have someone. Devin Singletary came in, was never really right. the guy. They draft Cook's James not Cook. Bad. He's not bad, but he's never carried the load at Georgia. So who is going to be the guy where they can commit to the run because we know they you... can throw. So I think if they lose to the Bengals, if they end up going on a run where they do not make the Super Bowl, they need a philosophical change. And it's yeah. to limit the throws compared to what well, they have Josh Allen doing Well, with, right with that too, if let's say they lose to the Bengals or the Chiefs because Josh Allen has a couple turnovers that game, Josh Allen's got to look at himself in the mirror and be like, you totally. know what? I can't be playing hero ball all the time. Sometimes it's okay to throw it away. Sometimes it's okay to check it down. Totally. But everyone thinks of that offense and because they've been so such a dominant offense the last few years that that's what he has to, maybe he's thinking that's what he has to do i don't know Bro, i'm, I'm t- not josh allen but like tired of that bullshit you know how much the narrative would change if it was dak throwing those interceptions what you, Bro, that's what, what i'm saying wait, 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 wait. if we it was dak throwing them interceptions you're, they're they're talking they're, they would be talking bro you get, get rid of this dude what type of bullshit are you tired of the we're giving josh allen passes left and right like we're talking about what do the bills need to help need to add bro josh allen stop turning the ball over yeah Facts. like win games go win the game yeah you're up 17 to zero like Dude, you said, that's what out. you cannot Bro, this, do is turn the is, ball over. If this is Dak, if it's Aaron Rodgers, if it's Tom Brady, just because we all if love Josh long. Allen so much, we're we're giving Josh Allen a pass because America loves the Bills and they love Josh Allen. But if it's any of those dudes if we're talking Joe about Burrow, right there, people are ripping him if apart. If it's Joe Burrow, if it's Justin Herbert, maybe not as much, but like a lot of other guys, they're going to be shitting on him being like, yo, this guy's got to figure it the fuck out. He's washed, all this stuff, like... He's, I mean, didn't he have the second most picks in the league this year? Yeah, I Josh think he Allen? was first at one point. He, he was, was first, and like then, in the last and then, back. and then Dak passed him. But. Did he in the back half of yeah. the year? Dak yeah. tied. Josh the Allen has a superman, uh, like a Josh Allen has a superman complex. Thinks he needs to do it all, be the guy. To well, that's the way he plays the game. He's, he's, that's why he's so exciting. He's so dynamic. But like, that's you why gotta, I love Josh Allen. A hundred percent. But it's, it, I feel like it's becoming, it's, it's hindering the Bills' potential at some point. Now, again, we're playing hypothetical. We don't know if they, what, what happens against Bills Bengals. But I just think, to me. There's a philosophical change that needs to happen if they do not make the Super Bowl. I never thought about that, the narrative behind Josh Allen. It's like, crazy. You like, is he, is he a social media quarterback? I mean, he's a dog. Nah. Don't get me I'm wrong. I'm just saying, Dak had a better year than Josh Allen, but somehow now it's he? Dak, yeah. If you look at the well, overall he played stats, less games. He played less games. If you look at the overall stats, it's pretty comparable, actually. Can't we look at that? Rushing yards, Josh killed him, but like that's a different well, story. Well, they have design runs for Josh. We don't do mm-hmm. really design runs for Dak unless it's like we pull it out the ass. Sometimes. Dak's like nice the, when he does run, though. The run for last night. I mean, the thing I'm worried about the Bills though is because they're so close every single year to winning a, or to, yeah, really to winning a Super Bowl, to competing for a Super Bowl, that you don't want to change that much. But then that's also dangerous because you're not going to do enough to get you over the hump. So you're just always hitting that AFC Championship game. You're always you might hit the Super Bowl, you might hit the divisional and lose. And we've seen that before. We saw that with like the Chargers in the 2000s with Philip Rivers and LT. We saw it with. Tom Brady, while Peyton Manning was 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 competing, and like the Patriots couldn't get over that hump, and I think the Bills are in dangerous territory now, where it's like almost as if like they need a bad loss so they can 
plug a huge yeah. player in and like yeah. figure something out because right now like they might just be hovering around really good and never be great like, yeah. top tier the, Bill, the bills might be missing brian dable a little bit right now too you look what he did to daniel jones in new york this year really limited his turnovers like his efficiency went through the roof and without brian dable i mean it's a different offense different system plays whatever like josh allen is just not as efficient he turns the ball over more so well, it might be a little bit of that well too. speaking on daniel jones dog is Daniel Jones the QB of the future in New York? Has he solidified himself for that opportunity? I think Daniel Jones proved proved against Minnesota that he is the franchise quarterback for the Giants. Moving Real forward. quick, we're just because we're talking about Josh Allen, Josh Allen did okay. lead the league in pick 16. Yeah. He did? And then yeah. Dak was like 15? Dak had 15, Derek Carr 14. Yeah. Dak also missed a lot of games. Dak missed quite yeah. a few. But anyway, back to Daniel Jones. The what do you think? Is, you think DJ is the, the future in New York? No, hell no. What? You don't think he's the franchise guy? Bro, this is talking about future in New York. Daniel Jones is the epitome of average, bro. You no, got to... no, 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 no. Don't give me average. Daniel Jones is better than average? He's better. He's above average quarterback right now, yes. No, he's not. This year? He's playing well. Now, here's what you have to talk about. He's a high completion percentage. He had the least amount of picks for starting quarterbacks this year. He threw for 300 yards in his first fucking playoff That's game. He threw 15 touchdowns this He's year. He's one of three quarterbacks. He threw 15 touchdowns Bro, this year. Bro, Daniel Jones, in that playoff game against Minnesota, he's one of three quarterbacks to throw for 300-plus yards and 75-plus rushing yards in the playoffs. Other two guys were Steve Young and Lamar Jackson. It's that guy. There's a stat right it's there. I don't usually have that. I don't know why I remember that off the top of my head. Great. That's not, yeah. that's, a, that's, a, wow. that's, that's a good stat. But there's a, most of the greatest quarterbacks ever are on that list you just said. That's like a very like well, nitpicky is ESPN a, stat. Yeah, yeah, it's but, a ESPN stat for sure. Yeah, but, no, yeah. but that's, that's that's great. But what I'm saying is like I get two on there. I like I like Daniel. He's improved a lot this year. His biggest problem was turnovers. He's fixed that. He's really not turning the ball over. Obviously, he still doesn't have the the big arm, like the big play potential. To go out and throw like four touchdowns, but in we game. don't know that they because have Darius Slade and a bunch of he had Joe 15 Schmose. touchdowns. He had 15 touchdowns this year. It's not high at all. In fact, it's pretty low. But it's okay. He has the rushing ability, and he when you take out the the turnovers and, and that whole problem that he had before, he becomes pretty good. But my problem with labeling him as the quarterback of the future for the Giants is, are, I mean, I don't know about you, I'm not okay with the pretty good quarterback. Like, I don't want a quarterback that's going to be okay. I, we see that in Minnesota with Kirk. Kirk is way better than Daniel Jones, and they can't win no. with Kirk. Derek He's Carr, way better, better than Daniel Jones. Okay, no. but here's, let me tell you I, Jimmy I, G, I, way better than I Daniel Jones. I disagree that those guys are way better. none of those quarterbacks can win. To win a Super Bowl in the NFL, you need a top-tier quarterback. Here's why. No, you, you need don't. A Dak you need presses. Presses. Here, a Dak Prescott, bro, you've been doing this for years now. What has Dak been able to do with you? He's only got, got one the more. coaching staff around Dak, Dak Prescott now. has one more playoff win in his career than Daniel Jones. And you just said a coaching staff around Dak. Daniel Jones finally has a coaching staff around him. You know what he doesn't have? A wide receiver. What happened if, if you gave up on Josh Allen in year two going into year three? And you, he had no talent. And around you know who him. helped he develop no that? Help. Brian Dable. Brian Dable. And you know what happened? You get Stefan Diggs for Josh Allen. He becomes an MVP candidate. You get Daniel Jones. You get Daniel Jones, D Hop, or Devontae, one of those guys Can that's going to be available. Me that? Can no, I guarantee you? So he's no. not your quarterback no. of the future. You my just said you can't be next year. It. My future can your future, be next year. Yeah, your future. My future's tomorrow. Will my you? future's five minutes from now. What we're talking about, That's quarterback. The what we're talking about, quarterback of the future is the next ten years. I'm talking about I right now. I could see that. I could. I it would not shock me. And you're going at you're, you're you're talking in like absolutes as if you actually know that this is his ceiling right here. We are seeing what he's capable of doing with. Fry Cooks, as, as Jack likes to say, with fucking Kenny Galladay, who just finally got back on the field. Lead blocker, Dude, Kenny play. Galladay. He's blocking Fantastic well. Blocker. Yeah, he's, he's, he's doing well. That but we don't, know what, we don't know what he's able to do with talent around him. We do know that he's able to get them to win a playoff game. And at the end of the day, that's all you fucking want from your quarterback. I will say, like, so give him talent and see if he can flourish. The, the future two, may not be the next 10 years, but the future may be one more year in franchise. This, okay, this is an early, this yeah, is early prediction year. right now. I'm just saying... We've seen two games from Daniel Jones that like mean a lot. One to clinch a playoff spot in his first playoff game. He might be a big time player. Like in big moments, he plays out of his ass, and that's what he's been doing. He and in that oh, game to nice. clinch to go to the playoffs. Yeah, he had the best pass rating out of any quarterback this entire season. And then he threw for three hundred plus and ran for seventy five plus in the playoffs in his first career game. I just think, so like I, I I just think the thing you're the thing you're lacking is is looking at who he's been as of late. Versus looking at the first couple of years, which I think is totally I fair. I said you took away. I, I, you got to look at body work. I think it's fair. I think it's fair. But with that being said, 
If futures ten years, maybe not because you need more to see, you need to see more. If all futures right, next year, but if futures next year, which is what I'm focusing on right now, I give him the franchise tag and I add a, a weapon around him to to flourish, yeah. and I want to see what he can do because I'm think, seeing enough of a sample size to win games and to win in big moments. I think that's to a, give him another. I think year. that's a best case scenario for both the Giants and Daniel Jones. Totally, because if you give him a weapon next year, it doesn't have to be D Hop. It can just be a better fucking receiver. You give can maybe DJ trade Moore. for DJ Moore. DJ Moore. Moore. You can trade for T Higgins maybe and like something like that. Michael like Pittman. Like like, my, like my some guy that's like, you know, he's a wide receiver and like a guy you want to draft in fantasy, right? I'm not trying to dress, draft Darius Slayton or Isaiah Hodgins. Hell no. Like, hell no. Like, you do that. Well, you might you're Daniel it. Jones. You, you're on the franchise tag one year. If you ball out with that weapon, the next year you're going to get a huge contract. Yeah. And if you're the Giants, you found your guy. Like, you're I, good. I agree. Let's see what he can do with the with the receiver, a bona fide all pro or just a pro bowl. Like somebody that is really good as, a, as an alpha just, wide yeah, receiver. Yeah, just a pro bowler, bro. And then we have to see, then we evaluate. But that's my point is like, I agree. Give him, give him the, uh, but the, you said the hell no. You said him the franchise hell tag. No, is he the future? I said hell no. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sold on him being the future. But that that's what that the question is. He sold on him. Uh, are we you sold know on he him? is. He's just scared that Daniel Jones gonna be in the division for the next ten years. Ooh. Well, I would love He's Daniel to be in the division. I would, I would love Daniel. Fan. He's not wearing the jacket now. He had it. I would love Daniel to be in the division, but I mean, as just like a, a Giants fan, as a Cowboys fan, who like look, I've seen mediocrity before, and it's, the quarterback was never our issue. It's never it never was with Romo. It never was with Dak. It always sucked to have a, a quarterback that can compete and not having a team around that. And the Giants have kind of – they have the formula to compete. And if it's the quarterback that holds them back over the next 10 years, mm. that's going to be really sad for Giants fans. You don't want that. Yeah, so you. I'm just saying, I, I think let's you, see if Daniel can develop. I think Daniel could develop with another all-star receiver, but we got to see it. I think with that and then just the coaching. Brian Dable has proved that he's the guy to – Coach I love Dave. Super Bowl. He's really I love Dave. Uh, Div divisionals. Coaches. You mentioned divisionals. Let's talk about another divisional matchup that happened. Seahawks 49ers. Are the 49ers still the team to beat in the NFC? Yeah, I think so. In them, the in the NFL? In yeah, the NFL? them are the Eagles. Wait, what? Uh, is the, them, are the them, 49ers? Them the oh, I thought you said, oh, wait, the Eagles. No, no, nah, them are the Eagles. Yeah. The top three teams in the NF NFL right now are the the uh 49ers, Eagles, and Chiefs. Was that in order? Sure. Ooh, I don't care. Stunning. I, I think it can they're all interchangeable. Other. I think. Yeah. yeah. The Forty uh, ers are so good, and what they did well against the Seahawks was exactly what what they've been doing that has allowed us, that has caused us to say that they're yeah the best team in the league. They utilize all their weapons. They utilize them very well. Debo they unleashed Debo. They Debo was using a way that they, they just you. put him in the backfield and receiver slot running running uh, crosses and, and, Bro, and pitches. One of, one of the most 49ers that plays I saw in that game was you had Debo in the backfield lineup as running back. You got Chris McCaffrey in the slot. It's like third and seven. They just run Debo as like a little uh, fucking what's it, play action, and you hit McCaffrey on, on the slant. slant. For a first down, I was like, dude, this I the most. I saw that shit, and I'm like, McCaffrey's point. catching slants on. Bro, it was like, it was like a downs. hard thrown ball, just like right there. Not even like, like a first down, like on a critical down to get a first yes, down. You have your, so you have good. your star running back at receiver running a slant to to really solidify the, your lead there. Like that's crazy. That Forty Niners, I think, are the team to be in the NFC because they execute at the highest level. I think they can execute or out execute anyone else in the NFL. Well, you know, I have I think, that much confidence. I think it's because you could argue they have the best coaching staff in football too. If you look throughout this entire year, the second half adjustments and stuff that that defense, especially but yeah. offense as well, has made. Like they were down at halftime, seventeen sixteen to the Seahawks. They don't allow any points until garbage time touchdown that the Seahawks get. They were fucking fuming on offense. Like there's, they're you, a scary team, dude. You said it last time, but have you seen enough to to ride the Brock Purdy wave? Is Brock Purdy the guy in, in San Francisco? Well, as, as for the 49ers, I've, I've seen enough to, well, to, to head into next year and, and make it be a battle between him and Trey Lance. Like, I'm, is, I'm excited. To, I, I'm confident in riding him. I'm confident in my quarterback situation going, going, yeah, going forward. Yeah, I mean, as a 49er fan, obviously, I'm really pumped with how this worked out because you can let Jimmy yeah, no go shit. and you have a super cheap quarterback room with Trey Lance and Brock Purdy. But I don't know what... Brock Purdy has to do to like solidify himself as 100% you are the starter. You got to win the Super Bowl. I think if you make the Super Bowl, you got to win the Super Bowl. You got to win. Because then it. you're Jimmy G ceiling. Then you've you've gotten to the precipice and the reason you exactly. traded up for Trey Lance it's and traded all that capital was to get you over the hump. If Brock Purdy gets you to the hump and you can't get up, yeah. Like I think it's Humpty like this. Dumpty. Purdy could shit the bed this weekend against the Cowboys 
And he's going to head into training camp next year, and he plays a little bit better than Trey. Like, they're going to have a battle. If he plays yeah. a little bit better, he's the quarterback because he's proven he can do it. And yeah. he's a rookie this year. If he shits the bed, who gives a fuck? Yeah, bro. I was talking, Niners, you're happy what I was you talking to one of my buddies about this uh, last week, and I was like, you know what the big difference is, too, is like Brock Purdy is like so much mature for his age because he started all four years at Iowa State. Trey Lance has played 17 games since college in the NFL. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's, crazy. that's it. That's crazy. And I saw this, too, because – Tampa, obviously, we're going to talk a little bit about Brady, but Brady's probably out the door, and they have to figure out what their quarterback situation is. And I saw a lot of Tampa might go try to get Trey Lance. Now, if I'm the Niners and I saw what I have from Brock Purdy, dude. I'm fine with that. What, what's hard about Trey Lance is giving up on Trey Lance is what you gave up to get Trey Lance in the draft. And you're only going to get a second get rounder maybe out of him. Back, you don't think someone will give up a first for, for Trey? Maybe. But that's the point. Des if you're desperate enough. If, if Tom Brady retires some, and they're desperate. If you can get some capital back, all right, that solves that problem. Get rid of Trey Lance. Exactly. You got Brock. Exactly. I, agree. I fully agree. That works for both of them. And then the 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 Buccaneers get a product. The Niners were developing Trey Lance. They're still developing him, so they don't have to work on that. They obviously still develop more. Yeah. But I think it works for both teams. But if I'm the Niners, I'm happy with what I got from Brock Purdy. Bro, not even that. If you're the Bucks, you can trade for him. If you're the Colts, you can trade for him, even though you have Dude, early it's... picks. If you're the the Raiders, you could trade up for him. Like there are teams that could, could the sacrifice that first gold. for Trey Lance. I was saying it's it's crazy how this worked out. He was never Brock Purdy was never supposed to see the field. This entire year, right? Meant His third be, string though. quarterback. And it's just a crazy story. And you see, like, even when he first came in, though, I was like, he had a couple good games. Like, dude, I'm so not sold on him yet. Like, it's this kid. Well, here you he are. was Mr. Relevant for a reason. But then I saw, I was talking to you guys earlier off camera about this, like, this one interview I saw with George Kittle. And they were like, all right, so when did you guys as a team know that you had something in Brock Purdy? Like, he wasn't just this other rookie. He goes, the first practice that we ever had with him. And it, he was basically saying, so one, so they were doing scrimmages, whatever. One of the receivers messed up on a route, and this is like the first or second play of practice. Brock Purdy chews him out, and like in the huddle and everything like that, but in like a leader way, where it's not like yeah. him being kind of a dickhead. And then Kittle was like, "Yeah, me, Debo, Trent, like all looked at each other and like, holy fuck, this kid's special." Like, I'm sold. Apparently, he's got so much confidence, but like quiet confidence to where the fact is just like he's. The guy. He, he looks like it. It. he Brock, looks like he has that top. Brock of Purdy's confidence is. If you're a 49ers fan or a 49ers player, you've seen Brock Purdy's confidence. Like this is no shock to you. I guess is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I it's a shock to me because he was the last pick. In yeah, the you draft. don't expect that. No, but, but I'm saying but like when as, you hear a, it as from a player, all, like if George Kittle's coming out and saying Brock Purdy within training camp yelled at someone. Yeah. That's yeah. a crazy story. Well, that, like, if you're an NFL fan of another team, you're not hearing that. You don't know that. Yeah. And that tells you a lot about why they are and There's how they that, are rallying I, around. I remember, them. like, the first start of his career is like going to the the Bucks week against Tom Brady. You hear Fred Warner talking about like 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 oh like how do you think this Brock Purdy kid's going? He goes he goes up against the best defense in the NFL every single That's week as our scout team guy. Brock yeah, Purdy's he'll be just fine. Brock Purdy's different, man. I'm I'm all for his legacy. Hey. I'm all for what could happen. I'm down. We'll the re see, the reason it? he gives you a little bit more than a Jimmy or I don't even know what Trey's got to be fucking yeah, we don't know. perfectly honest, but like more than Jimmy is that like <laughs> he'll take that shot downfield. He'll also move he'll in stay, the pocket. He'll he's move in the pocket. Mobility. He's a little elusive, but he'll also like he'll be able to see like if next week if Micah Parsons is coming for his ear hole, he's still gonna stay in that pocket, deliver one thirty five yards down. I don't, that's the confidence I'm talking about though. You shouldn't yeah. worry about market Micah Parsons. <laughs> I don't know about that Micah, might be different. But, but no his ear hole. I mean, he, he, he's done he's it gonna some, be there. He's done it against times. some top tier guys, but I think that's what gives you so much confidence about Brock Purdy is that he's some of his qualities is stuff you don't see in a rookie quarterback. You see yeah. in like a fifth, sixth, seventh year quarterback, which is that the pocket rush is presence. coming into your face and the ability to move within the pocket. Like Brady was never mobile. Brady's not mobile at all, mm. but he's one of the best just movers in the pocket. Yeah, you can find that little rush. crease and kind of yeah, just avoiding the rush. Drew Brees did it very well. Like. That's what Brock Purdy does well, but he's even a little bit more elusive than them and then throwing on the run. Like, the type of pocket presence you see from Brock Purdy, you're not supposed to see that as a, as a rookie quarterback. Yeah, he can develop yeah. every other part yeah. of his game. And but that is what makes you see, like, this guy is a gamer. And all I he agree. has to do, too, he doesn't have to do that much. He just has to not be stupid and not turn the ball over. Yeah. And you'll see him make some plays where he scrambles out of the pocket. It feels like some crazy shit that you see from Zach Wilson, but what does Zach Wilson do? He forces it downfield, tries to throw it into coverage. It's a pick. Rookie shit. Brock Purdy, I've seen him do crazy things already this year just to get out of the pocket and make and some space, and he play. just throws the ball out of bounds. And it's an awesome play. Or he finds play. the check down. Yeah. That's what's impressive. You're right. Zach Wilson throws it deep. He's not panicking. Josh Allen. Like, he's playing yeah. football. He's or not playing quarterback. He's playing Justin football. Justin Fields, through most, a lot, like most of this season and last year, sees that first guy, he's taking off and running. Mm. Brock Purdy's yeah. looking. Obviously, he doesn't have the athletic ability of Justin Fields, but still looks to make a play down the field. It's impressive. Speaking of athletic, 
Like the Ravens and the Bengals game happened, ah, and like who cares? That was such a that was the most boring game of the week. Even though it was, came down to the wire. But you know what of, wasn't but... boring is Lamar Jackson taking off his bio. Is Lamar Jackson done in Baltimore? Yes, probably. If you're him, why the hell would you go back? I agree. I fully. You've agree done. With you. You're telling me that they they're they're extending Roquan Smith before him. They're paying him before it. Like that's ridiculous. I just think if you're Lamar Jackson and what you've given to that organization, what you've done for them, you are the Ravens. For them to support you by signing an aging Des Bryant, right. uh, aging Deshaun Jackson. Yes, you go out and get Rashad Bateman, but he hasn't been able to be anything. He hasn't been able to stay healthy. Those signings aren't, aren't fair. The, the, those were mid-season, like those were the guys on the market. No like, signings but, are you know, fair. You know, no it's, signings are it's fair. The, it's the signing of like Sammy Watkins. It's, it's shit like that. It's not, where it's like, yeah, but it's, who's it's a, out there? T.O. going to sign T.O.? I'm, that's not my point. My point is at the trade deadline, you had D.J. Moore available. You have guys that are potentially available that you, you can go Instead, you go out and get And even if you miss, at least swing. And I think the Ravens have failed to swing in these couple of years that they've had Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson has been everything to that franchise, and he deserves every single bag that's going to come to him. But for them to not invest in who he is as not only a rusher, but as a passer, to not give him that ability says that, A, Greg Roman needs to go, or and Lamar Jackson you know, stays, or Lamar Jackson goes and Greg Roman stays. You know what it is? It's, it's organizational negligence. It's, it's one of those things, and Harbaugh's been there forever, too, and he's been with teams that are so defensively strong, and that's what the Ravens identity as a franchise is but you're going to lose your best quarterback of all time because you're so focused on only improving the defense and all this stuff and having elite defense fucking you know what when you get a talent like lamar you build around and you change you're an offensive juggernaut type of team yeah sure defenses win championships but you're going to lose a talent like lamar because you're so focused on that i don't defense. even think it's that complicated i think it's like well, they can still keep them this offseason i think you give them a fat bag you make them one of the highest paid quarterbacks ever and then you go get you go get mike evans you go get For sure michael Pittman jr they like, should they want but they but but you like to talk Talk about patterns. We haven't seen a pattern that they're willing to do that. That's the problem. We had one in the past. They traded for they got Anquan Bolden. They've done it in the Dude, past. It's, 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 that Anquan Bolden. They won a Super Bowl with that. Okay, yep. but this is how, how how many years ago are we talking? We're talking in we're talking Over last 10 four years. years. Ago. That you, that, that four, was against Colin Kaepernick. I'm talking like, about four years so cool. where it's now a heavy okay. passing NFL. Well, uh, so in, in, to, in response to that, they had Hollywood Brown, who they invested with a first round pick in. They invested a first round pick in Rashad Bateman, and he's gotten hurt. Hollywood Brown was ass, dude. He's like a small receiver. He wasn't good who, at all. He's yeah. just a burner. Doesn't really do much. So that's what I'm saying. Now understand, like, give Lamar a, a, an alpha X, like somebody who can go up and get it. I agree with you. So, l- l- so uh, yes, Lamar could leave, and he and he would be smart to leave. Go to New York, a team that already has kind of a system set up. But the Ravens, I think, they can still salvage the situation T- totally. by giving him a huge yeah, bag totally. and going to get. Two receivers. Get him an X, go up and get it type of guy like DeAndre Hopkins. Keep slot. in mind, he's 31. And then get him a younger, like DJ Moore guy who can... A gadget. Who, yeah, who's more of a gadget, like a Debo, the way... The yeah, it'd be unreal, but let me ask you. You think Baltimore's going to actually do that? Gut feeling. No. Well, I, I think... Gut feeling, yes or no? The... If they want to keep Lamar, yes. The blueprint is there for what they should do, but will they do it to a whole different thing? Like, I don't think they will. If would. I'm Lamar Jackson, I'm disrespected. You've, you, not only did you win the MVP, you led the league in passing touchdowns. I'm more than a runner. Stop with the rushing. I'm a, I'm a running back. Stop with this nonsense. He's a capable pocket passer. Give him more of the opportunity. Either fire Greg Roman or Lamar's out. Lamar but you got to bring one next. Lamar wants to run. Bro. If you don't use Lamar's legs, you, you don't got nothing. Yeah, you that, have but to. But stop going, going from 80-20, maybe go to 60-40. I don't know. The Eagles look pretty good this year running with Jalen Hurts. Bro, how many more RPOs does it feel like Jalen Hurts has than Lamar? Lamar's are designed runs. Hurts, hurts a lot more. Okay, but if you I are Lamar... If, hurts, I think Lamar's at like eight carries per game. Uh, Jalen Hurts at like 11 or 12. Does eight carries... can? Does eight carries, is that designed runs? Is that what you're saying? No matter. He's running it, period. No matter like, if it's designed or not, you're running it. You're, you're putting yourself in the same does position. does that count as a carry? I think no, it no, 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 no. It does. A, I'm, a scramble counts I'm, as a you, carry. No, no, no. If you cross the line of scrimmage, it's a run. Okay. Yeah, so it counts as a carry. So it counts well, as scrambling as a... is, is, is running around in the backfield. Well, I'm That's saying not, scrambling well, like a outside scramble the for a run. If you run, If you cross the line of scrimmage, you're a runner. That's an attempt. Okay. So the answer is yes. The answer is the fact that if you're Lamar Jackson, you should leave Baltimore. For what it's been. Lamar, sure. hey, the, the Ravens have an opportunity to salvage it. I do not think they're going to salvage if, it. Uh, if I'm Lamar, I want to go to New York, bro. I want to I play with Robert Sala and all those pieces in, with the Jets. Out of every single place he could go, you'd want to see Lamar. in. If you're Lamar, you're going to New York? 100%. They're the most complete How? team that is a quarterback away that you can find. I agree. Over Miami? Lamar. 
over Miami for sure. Yeah, they they have they have a better makeup, and I think you know what more what you have with Robert Sala than than Mike McDaniel, who's a good offensive coach, but defense is a huge problem. The Jets haven't figured out on defense. They have arguably a top five defensive player right now in Sauce Gardner, the mm-hmm. best corner in football, honestly. Quinn and Williams is a beast Quinn on the Williams line. Quinn Williams is a dog. They don't even have an OC. Their, their linebackers are great. C.J. Mosley, Quan Alexander. They don't even like, know what their identity is on offense. Well, they're figuring that out. That's but what they have they're going to do. Talent. They have Garrett Wilson. They have Elijah Moore. They have a great running back. Brees Hall. Duo. They got Brees Hall. They got... Bro, the wrong. read option with Lamar and Don't Brees get me Hall. wrong. Lamar in New York would pain me more than anything. But I'm going to Miami before I'm going to New York, and it's Just, not because Because he's biased. from there. Well, yeah, and it would be a nice. Yeah, it'd be cool for him to go home. What about New Orleans? New Orleans could be cool, especially if Sean Payton know. takes over. Seattle could see that, and I could see New England. I would love to see him in New, New England. England. Yeah. You 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 get rid of Patricia. I don't know if Patricia would know what to do with the fuck with with Lamar Jackson, yeah. but you get him a coach because look, Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick loves Lamar Jackson. We know this. He's talked about it so much before in the past, and Belichick knows how to use gadgets better than any other coach in the league, by far. What he was able to do with Edelman. Edelman was a safety. Like he used him at safety before he became a good receiver. All this kind of stuff. Chris Hogan was a lacrosse What's player different? and came out and, and and was a fucking Pro Bowl receiver. What he could do with Lamar is going to be fucking different. So I would oh, love yeah. to see Lamar. I see the Patriots and, and the Ravens England. being the exact same thing. Going to a place where they fail to add upper echelon talent to quarterback play and expect the quarterback play to elevate those. I don't know. I, I'm That's sure. Baltimore. Bel- if- Belichick gave Brady the greatest rosters ever assembled, but. How did how to work out for Randy him? Moss, back, West West out Super Bowls. back of his back half of his six, career. Only six, six. Back six, half six. of his career. <laughs> That's when, he won, that's when he won most he of the Super Bowls. I'm talking, bro, the last, like, three years when he was that's in That's when he won most of the Super Bowls. He won, he won Super Bowl. His, he won his first three uh, from 01 to 04, and then he didn't win until the next decade. How many decade. Super Bowls did, did Brady have in the last three years? In the last seven, he had three. I'm talking in the last three years in what, New England. Uh, you could pinpoint like, in New England, that, bro. It's a new offense, bro. It's a new NFL. You need talent around your quarterback. Matt Jones ain't doing shit. You invest the capital on Matt Jones. Lamar going to... To New England is the same thing. I would stay in Baltimore. It's the same shit. Nah, Give me you're talent. Dolph- I'm you're just a Dolphins fan. That's yeah, I am. I am. I definitely am. Yeah. All right. So final answer. If you're Lamar, you go where? Jets. Jets. You said ATL before. Yeah, I would like to see him in Atlanta. I think he fits the culture. I think it would be uh, cool to see a guy that's so much, so similar to Michael Vick in play style come and, and do it again. And they have Kyle Pitts, Drake London. They're building a very Algiers, quiet nice. foundation there. So I, 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 I like it. Um, but I think the Jets are just a more sound team right now, and, and you can play they, under they the have, fucking lights. They have a great culture there that they're actually building already too. Like with just they just want guys that want to be football players. Yeah. Like it don't matter what position you are, you just want to play fucking football. Like that's Lamar's like that kind of guy. Yeah. All but right. the New York's the lights. Hey, you got to come. He plays well under those. Come days. to Broadway. I man. get that. Heisman I winner, bro. Like, I want to see Lamar out of Baltimore. How about that? Yeah. Sure. Right. That's sadly, but all right. Well, let's now move into our divisional round. Breakdown. All right. I think we've talked. Yeah. Oh, do we yeah. talk Cowboys? Do we talk yeah, Cowboys? Yeah, but I want to I get to the real Cowboys talk. I want to get to the Cowboys Niners conversation because I don't really care about the Bucks right now. The Bucks are trash. Well, I we got to at least talk about how how uh, great of a performance Dak put in. Dak was the awesome. Buccaneers. All right. Was, so Cowboys Bucks then. Let's the defense. Talk about the defense it. Quickly, too. Quickly. Defense? Are the Cowboys the Cowboys the, the the team we saw against the Bucks? Is that the Cowboys moving forward? Well, if we look at past history. Oh, they patterns. have strung patterns. together patterns. four patterns. straight wins based off of the patterns. <laughs> they have been able to string together four straight wins, and in those four straight wins, in the in those uh, the the high part of the patterns, um, if you will, uh, <laughs> then uh, yeah, they've played very well. Like within those, they've beat the not the or the Vikings forty to three. They've they've put up forty on the Eagles. Like they've had these very dominant wins, and they've been within those like little stretches of the season, and then they fall. But this was the first game that, that, that they won that was in that f- uh, the four-game pattern. So they got three more. And whether they can keep, keep it going, I don't know, because they've been inconsistent. But you would think that they could keep it going, especially with Dak Prescott playing very, very well. The defense getting it together. A lot of injuries on the secondary. I was worried about it, especially against the Bucks, who have receivers out the ass, as Jack likes to say. They got receivers everywhere, and they didn't do much. So if the Cowboys keep this up defensively, Micah Parsons – Wrecked the game yesterday, and Dak had a perfect game, the best performance out of any quarterback in the wild card round. Then they could keep this going, and they could beat. They could go into San Fran, beat the Niners, go into Philly, beat the Eagles because he's a better quarterback than Hurts too. And then you get to the Super Bowl, and right there, that's when you got to turn the fuck up. But I do trust Mike McCarthy in the Super Bowl because we've done it. We've seen I, it you know what I'm? I'm curious to watch is that Trent Williams. 
against Micah, Micah Parsons. Parsons. That's going to be fun as that fuck. That will be fun, but at the same time. That might determine time, the they're game. They're going to move him around the same Micah's way Nick Bosa is going to move it around. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. think. He's I don't, way I don't more think it's be, yeah, yeah, and he's way more versatile than Bosa. I know Bosa goes on the left and right side, but Micah's going up A gaps, B gaps, going around yeah. the edge. Like I, would he, say, I would say Bosa's a better edge rusher, but just Micah's a better pass rusher because he can go anywhere. Overall, yeah. Where do, you rank, dynamic. where do you rank Dak based off that performance against the Bucs? Overall so, quarterbacks, overall not quarterbacks. just playoff quarterbacks. So uh, yeah, the overall quarterbacks, I, I don't change on where I had them a few weeks ago when I made the ranking. I, I have them four. I have four. If I rank the <laughs> if I rank the top what? quarterbacks in the NFL tell, right now, yeah, tell me, tell me. I have Patrick Mahomes one, Josh. I'm gonna go Joe Burrow two now. I'm gonna I move like my that. rankings. Ooh, okay. Joe Burrow two. Yeah. Josh Allen three and Dak Prescott four. And I'll tell you something. You don't have Jalen Hurts, Dak, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Hurts, Dak, or any of those guys over Dak is Lamar? creeping on three because he's outperforming Josh creeping Allen. Creeping on right three? Now. He's outperforming Josh Allen right now. He has what Josh Allen doesn't have. He's more of he's, he's more turnover prone. He does what Josh Allen does worse. No, he, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Dude, Dak, Dak's he had inter, the Dak, same amount of like one less pick Dak, in the, the less inter, games. The interceptions that Dak threw this year, it was it led the league in that in passes that should have been caught. So deflections that were that should have I'm been sure caught. I'm sure Josh had a ton of those too. Well, Dak had the most. But regardless, Josh Allen is great. And and I think just because of how dynamic he is his ability to run, I'll put him a slightly over Dak. But if he keeps turning the ball Ooh. over, Dak had a perfect game. Five touchdowns, 300 yards uh, in those five touchdowns. One was a rushing touchdown, a almost perfect passer rating. Bro, I'll take eight it was to, a great I'll take eight to turn, ten quarterbacks before I take Dak. Can you turn your hat around? I mean, look, bro. I mean, Josh Allen's uh, a better quarterback than Dak. It's not even close. That's what the that, fuck are we doing? That is here? not a fucking discussion. What are we doing here, bro? You 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 got two teams. You got two teams. Okay, yeah, do you roll? You got the Bills. You got the you got the Cowboys, and, and they're very similar. All right. And and oh, bro, fuck I'm gonna it. leave. It's it's the same. I mean, you got one team. Fuck it. Cut that out. America's yeah. team. You got, you got one team. They're the, the same team. Lines. Forget the Cowboys or the Bills. And you put either Dak at quarterback or you put Josh Allen at quarterback. I trust, Josh to, Allen. Win, I trust to win a game with Dak more than Josh Allen. How many playoff games has Dak won? Two? Two. Same way. Josh Allen won more last year. What did he win last year? No, he won two last no, year. No, he won two last year. Sorry. He won the, that, <laughs> that amount. He's won three the last two years. He That's won fine. three. He's, had a, better, he's, had, he's had a better He's had a better team. You're out of your mind. Josh Allen's team is great. And, and he plays very well within the system. I Sorry, agree. Respectfully, Look. respectfully. I love you. You're good looking. Beautiful. But you're eyes, dumb as fuck. But you're dumb as fuck. <laughs> look, look. Four. I, I got Dak four. He might be three after next week. Are you if, if Dak beats the Niners and, and puts up the type of performance he put up against the Bucks, he you might have to All take right, him over I, then Burrow. I might consider him top okay. five. You might have to take him over Burrow. No, oh no, my no, god. No. no. What are Full you start, saying? Encroachment. Everything. Just shut the fuck up. Look, here's what? Dak Prescott has the most pressure out of any quarterback in the league to perform. Any quarterback in the league to perform. If Josh Allen was performing as bad as Josh Allen is right now with the turnovers, Dak would be fucking canceled by the league. It'd be, it'd be get this dude out of Dallas. No, you're but right. But it's not. It's because he's America's team. He's the quarterback for America's team, the most scrutinized, the most polarizing player in the league because he is at the court. He's the quarterback for the most, the biggest franchise Bro, in the world. Sometimes I can't fucking if stand he plays, you. Jesus. If he lives up to the expectations that are that are unfair because he's been playing a great season so far, but the expectation is, look, he has to perform very well. If he performs very well like he did against the Buccaneers, he's able to keep that going, we have to say he's a top three quarterback. No, no, no. no, 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 no. We would do it with Adam, We would do it with Burrow. Okay. We would do it with Allen. So we would do it with Trevor Lawrence. It took us almost We're, two years to put Joe Burrow in the top three. We put, Joe, we put Joe Burrow in the top three in second year in the league. No, no we didn't. Dak Prescott I, is outperforming him. Yeah, no, Joe, we didn't. Joe Burrow went against Tyler Huntley and put up 17 All points. All right, well, let me answer your question. Couldn't you just said, beat the you Ravens. Just said we are going to say it. Jack, if Dak Prescott puts up a great performance against the 49ers, are you going to say he's a top three quarterback? He's not top five if he does that. Thank you. Can you ask me? Yeah, Adam, actually, let's play a little game That's with you. That's my point. So I know, I know, I know what Lee Pace thought. I know what his ranking is. Let's play a little game. Let's do it. Would you take this quarterback over Dak Prescott? Okay, off the dome. All right, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Josh Allen, yeah. Joe Burrow, yeah. Trevor Lawrence, yeah. Justin that's, Herbert. That's I thought about right it though. I thought Justin Herbert, about. yeah. Lamar, oh no, yeah. Tua, oh, well, oh. I mean, I'm taking Tua over everyone. So. All right, well, no. Aaron Rodgers. How many years? Right now, like right now, just right? one, one year, one yeah, year. Yeah, just right now. Aaron Rodgers. All right, let's think a little bit harder. Tom Brady. No, no, not right now. Jared Goff. 
No. Bro, really? Daniel Jones. No. Dude, I would say I would say DJ. I Warren. think Dak Prescott is a top eight quarterback. Where you put him is up to a Cowboys fan, is up to people that are not fans of the Cowboys. But to say Dak Prescott is an undisputed I'm top saying, three quarterback is bias out the wazoo. Dak Prescott is the most disrespected quarterback in the NFL. So respect him. Okay, hell will respect him. That's what you Fucking mean. Christ. I mean, I respect him. I'm asking so America. Do I, but I'm, I'm asking America to put you not but here's my point. I understand that you got these other quarterbacks ahead of him. I get it. That's fine. Justin Herbert has not performed close to what how Dak Prescott has performed. Dak Prescott. And if Justin Herbert had how many and, years? And why do you have Justin Herbert lower on your list? Or you have him higher than Dak. But why do you have him not as a top five quarterback? Because you haven't seen those performances from him. You've seen him from Dak. Why is he not higher? That's my point. Dak's had he's a larger sample he's unfairly size. Unfairly criticized. Dak's been around the NFL. Justin Herbert had one fucking head coach who you fucking think is the worst person in the and entire world. And now you're world. praising Mike McCarthy and is one of the like. Mike on. McCarthy was never someone that came in here and was he like, was carried. Oh, he was Mike carried McCarthy. by Rodgers. So at this well, point, then that, then, that, then that carries the point even further that he was carried by Rodgers. Okay, and then that means Dak is carrying him now because oh, you fuck. killed Tom Brady. You scored five touchdowns, Again, 300 yards. I'm not discrediting Dak. Four, I think four. Dak is that we literally four said passing, one rushing. Dak oh, is true. a top ten quarterback, but don't come in here and say he's a top three quarterback with some nonsense. No, I said if he beats. The Niners this I don't week care. Win or lose. Which he won't anyway. He's four right All now. right, so let's talk about it. 49ers and Cowboys. Why are the four, why are the Cowboys going to win? Well, Brock Purdy's a rookie, and and rookies are prone to mistakes. Now he's been very good. Dak Prescott has been prone to so many mistakes this year. Well, I wouldn't say Dak has been prone to mistakes, but the Cowboys offense. He's going against. Prone, a, he's going to be going against a totally different defense. Second most INT is prone to mistakes, but continue. No, mo I, 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 no thought well, was most. What I, what I said. Second most. Yeah, second most. Okay, okay. Well, what I said was. The offense is prone to mistakes, and Dak, and Dak Prescott is is a, a byproduct of that. Because if a receiver okay. is dropping a wide open ball and, and the, the defender catches deflection, takes it to the house, that's that's an interception on Dak's stat line, but it's not his fault. Dak has been at the at the helm of that a lot this season, and that's okay. But the Niners are a more complete team. I, I like the Niners a lot. I've, I've been said the, mo the most complete team in the league. Their offense is complete as fuck. Their defense is complete Don't as hedge. fuck. But at have I not said that? No, he, he literally yeah, just said the Niners are the best team in football yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, but I... But what... And here's where I'm going to go. Brock Purdy is a rookie. And at some point, he's going to have to... The lights are going to be bright. And I think he's done a really good job of playing under the bright lights. But we did see him against the Seahawks in the first half. The Niners were losing... Seven, was it 17-16? Yeah. Losing 17-16 in the first half to a Seahawks team that does not have close to the offense They're that the terrible. Cowboys have. So, let's just put it into perspective. If Pur and, and Purdy got, got hotter as he went on, and he has... An amazing supporting cast, the best supporting cast in the league. So benefit to him that he doesn't have to be a Superman. But if he comes out like that against the Cowboys and the Cowboys rack up the points, he's going to be forced to go into a more of a more of a, a kind of gunslinger mentality, me, and that's dangerous for him. Let me, especially when you have Micah Parsons coming off the edge. You got Demarcus Lawrence coming off the edge. It's dangerous. So let, let, let me let me ask you something though, because. You you said that if the Cowboys are going to beat the Niners, Dak's going to have to ball the fuck out, play Superman almost, right? He's yeah, going to he have to have a game and a half. Yeah, he does. Are you more confident that Dak will have a game like that or that Brock Purdy will just have a fine game where he doesn't turn the ball over? Because that's all the Niners need to win. Which yeah. are you more confident in happening? I'm, I'm more comfortable with the Niners. Yeah. Because, because the Cowboys' offense hasn't been consistent. Again, outside of CeeDee Lamb, the talent is fucking terrible. Tony Pollard is one of the most overrated running backs in the league. I'm tired of everybody Whoa. saying I'm tired of everybody saying people are skip Bayless today. I know we, everybody. Well, that was no, crazy that he's better than Bayless. McCaffrey. He's saying he's better than McCaffrey. Tony oh, Pollard well, has you. big playability, bro. If he gets 15 carries a game, he's gas. He can't do fucking shit. I love Tony. I think he's a great utility piece. But to say he's a great running back, bro, like he's not. Zeke looks slow, fat as hell, like doesn't look great. I like <laughs> Zeke. He's funny good, when he says it. He's a good pass blocker. Noah Brown is a great number seven wide receiver. Like we don't have the guys outside of CeeDee Lamb to really – really cause damage in the offense. So, yes, I'm more comfortable with the Niners because they have a slew of weapons. They're they're very – they're Good very – yeah, they got, a lot, they got a lot of depth, and they know how to utilize it. But Dak did it one game, and I think he can do it again. Why are the Niners going to win? Uh, I mean, they're just better. They are better. <laughs> I agree. No, I mean, I it's it's the – it's they're, they're a complete, complete team. I think – Like, the Niners are going to run all through it. They, the Dallas Cowboys do not have that good of a running defense, and that's what the Niners do best. Rob Purdy's going to catch him on a couple play action, something like that, down the field to Ayuk or some shit. And the defense is the best defense in football, and it's going to give Dak problems. I think it could go either way, but the slight edge to the Niners goes to them because I think 
Dak Prescott needs to be the guy yes. in order for the Cowboys to win, whereas the 49ers need Brock Purdy to be a guy in order Facts. to win. And I think, like you just <clears> said, <throat> it's a far more reasonable thing to expect Brock Purdy to just be a guy and do what's needed to win versus Dak Prescott putting up another four-touchdown performance. I'm not saying he's not capable of it, but I have more confidence in that. Yeah. I think it's going to be here, a good game. Here's the thing with the game is that, you know, Cowboys could beat the 49ers thir- by 38 points. I wouldn't be surprised. The Niners could win by 38 points. I wouldn't be surprised. Like, I have no clue how this game's going to go because I know what team is going to show up for the 49ers. I don't know what the fuck kind of team is going to show for Dallas. It's fair. It's been weird this year, for sure. It, it, it's hard to predict. But if the pattern says anything, it's they're going to show up. The pattern up. says anything, the Cowboys are going to show up. And, and I just look at you know, when the Cowboys played the number one pass defense in the league in the Philadelphia Eagles, they could not slow down anybody. Like anybody, and they have a pretty good run defense too. Uh, well, you, and 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 so I mean, the Niners. I think their front seven is better than the Eagles, and they're gonna get more pressure on Dak, especially because I don't know if Jason Peters is gonna play this this weekend. He might be hurt, and we're shuffling well, around the offensive doesn't. line a little bit. So it's it's a little worrisome, especially when you got Nick Bosa coming off the edge. But you know the Cowboys are gonna prepare for that. And yeah, again, Dak has to ball out. If he doesn't ball out, the Cowboys are gonna lose. That's what it comes down to. If Dak doesn't throw for, I would say at least. Three touchdowns, he probably needs to throw for three, and you need a couple rushing touchdowns on top of that. Then the Cowboys aren't. Gonna I, say, win. I, th- I think y'all got to put up twenty-eight to thirty to win. <sighs> yeah, I'd say thirty-five probably to win. I think it could be a close game. Maybe like what's, thirty-five. What's crazy about this 31. too is that since Brock Purdy became the starter in the, uh, I can't talk Words. again. Since Brock Purdy became the starter for the 49ers, only one offense has scored more points per game, and that's the Dallas Cowboys. Mm. Yeah, it should be a high-scoring game. So it's it going to be a fun sexy, one. It's a sexy I don't matchup. know if it'll be as high-scoring as people think, actually. Can we move on to the other NFC matchup? Good defense. Yeah, which one's that? The Eagles and the Giants. Okay, Eagles are going to beat them. The Eagles are going to beat them. I yeah, wouldn't but be y'all shocked think it's going to be close. I, no, no, I, no, 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 no. No, 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 not y'all, me. I think it's going to be close. I, I think the Giants cover. I think it's a closer game. If if it's a if it's a kind of a... I can't. I don't know why I can't think today. Find the words. You're good. Find the words. <laughs> if Eagles-Giants is going to be a shootout... The, the Eagles are going to fucking kick their ass. It's not even going to be close, right? If it's an offensive battle, but if it's a close, grimy, gross game, that's games that the Giants won all year long. I think they could do it. Here's what's crazy about the Giants is I could see three different outcomes. I could see the Eagles absolutely blowing them out. I could see the Giants keeping it close and then losing. And I could also see the Giants winning. Obviously, these are all three scenarios, so it's like a hedge. But it wouldn't <laughs> shock me either way. What and about if, the Giants killing uh, him? No, no, no. See, I, I don't like how he does that. He's like, I can see every scenario. This scenario, this scenario, this scenario, this scenario, and then like at the end of the day, we All just right, so what scenario can right? you see? What scenario are you seeing? There's one, there's one scenario that's about to happen, and the Eagles are going to smack the fuck out of the Giants. <laughs> and it's 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 sad for Giants fans. Actually, I don't give a fuck, but it's it's sad. You said the Vikings are going to win by 14, though. I did, and, and I was wrong. But th- And that's exactly why. why I think sad? they're in a prime position right now. You know, they beat the Vikings, who... Everyone has said they've been on fraud watch all year. They had negative. They had a negative point differential going into the playoffs. They, they've every game has been one possession for them. They haven't shown any kind of like dominance really in their wins. So, but at the same time, we always hedge that with like they got Justin Jefferson, Dalvin Cook, Kirk Cousins can play really, really well at times. They had T.J. Hawkinson and and whatever. So we hedge that right with with the talent, and then the Giants go out and beat the Vikings, as they very well could have. You know, we a lot of you know, like half of us, I think, picked them to win, and 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 they went out and, and won, and now they're on they're on a high horse because they're also saying that they almost beat the Eagles in week 18. week eighteen. The Eagles were barely playing for anything at that time. Yeah, they were playing for the one seed, yes, but that was also uh, th- what also mattered for that was the Cowboys losing, in which they were losing at the time. They already they had the live update on the score. They weren't playing for much. So now you got you're getting the Eagles team that is a week that has one week of rest, or I guess two weeks of rest. Mm-hmm. Two weeks of rest. They didn't play last Sunday. Um, they are the best offense, really, in the league. You talk about just their rushing ability, to, their ability to pass off of the run. Uh, the receiving core is maybe the most underrated receiving core, Devontae, Devontae Smith and uh, A.J. Brown. And the Giants just they, they just they just can't compete with that kind of talent. Like, they're a gritty football team, and Dable knows how to make them play very well, and I, I love that. You know, I, I like gritty football teams. But at some point, you, there's a gritty team, and then there's a gritty team that also has the talent, and that's the Philadelphia Eagles. And I, and I don't think it's going to be I close. could see the Eagles sleepwalking into this, though, after having two weeks off. Yeah, yeah, totally. One totally. of those kind of things. But I just don't think they have the – I don't think that's the makeup of their team. Lane Johnson's a fucking dog. Uh, Is he coming back for Jordan sure? Jordan Mailata. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jason, what, Kelsey. Jason Kelsey. Jason Kelsey. Jason Kelsey, that's what we're going for. Jason Kelsey. And then the receiver like, – A.J. Brown is like the modern-day T.O. He's a certified dog, bro. Devontae that guy's Smith crazy. Is coming two, he's like three years out from a fucking Heisman. 
Uh, Jalen Hurts is squat 600 pounds, and he just played like a fucking dog. Like, he, mm-hmm. like you don't want any part of him. The secondary, Darius Slay. Uh, and they still got Fletcher Cox. Well, I think C.J. Garner-Johnson got hurt. Oh, I don't know. Brandon but Jordan Graham, Davis, Brandon and Dominic Graham. Sue is an old fart. You know, you got Robert Fletcher Quinn Cox there, still Fletcher there. Cox. Who else is there? They don't really uh, got many line- Reddick. They don't have any linebackers. But- no, nah, they have decent linebackers. I-, I think you make a good point. I wouldn't be shocked if they blow them out. As for the Giants, win or lose, you can't be sad at all. This huge season year. has been a huge win. I Bro, if you that. told make me that the-, the Giants would win a playoff game this year at the start of the season, I'd say you're on crack. You got so much to be proud of, so much to look forward to. You bought Daniel Jones another year. You can go out and get some talent. Maybe someone wants to come to New York. Maybe... People, I think actually for once, if you look at the Jets and the Giants, New York football is back. Because yeah. you have people that actually want to probably come play for the Jets, want to come probably play for the Giants. You may renew that rivalry in a you, real serious way. Got two, I'm happy for New York You football. got two teams in New York that have a great culture. Yeah. Yes. It's fun to play for and watch. I'm happy to, to see New York football back. And in general, win or lose, Giants, you got a lot to be proud of this year. They do. And there's only, there's, they can only build up from this. Like, I think I agree, I agree with what you guys said earlier. Franchise tag Daniel. Get him a receiver. See how he performs. If he takes the next step, there you go. That's your quarterback. If he doesn't, go find someone new. There's going to be a lot of guys that you could trade for. And they're going to have the capital to trade. Yeah. So go. you should go ahead All right, let's run that. through these last two. Bills, Bengals, what's going to happen? I think it's a toss-up. I'm not confident in either. I think it's going to be a pretty good game probably. Josh Allen versus Joe Burrow is always fun. I'm just going to go Bengals just because I feel like they've been there – uh, before the Bengals have also been there before, but the Bills have a little I bit think, more history. I think in the, the, playoffs. the Bengals are playing with a little bit more of an edge too, a little chip on their shoulder with this game. With what happened, obviously the Mar Hamlin stuff was terrible, and they did the right thing by yeah. not making them play that game yeah. out. But the Bengals are winning; they were dominating that that whole game, and they're pissed off that they didn't have a chance to get that two seed and play minutes. this game yeah. at home in front of their crowd. So they're gonna be playing pissed off. I think Joe Burrow turns the ball over far less than Josh Allen. I think he's just a better quarterback I, in general. I think they win that game. It, it worries me, though, because I think with, with Josh Allen, we, we said it earlier, turnover prone. Yes. Going to create these turnovers. God damn it, the Dolphins electric. are not going to convert on that. Just with, with Skylar Thompson, you're not going to convert. The Bengals and Joe Burrow can convert on that. And oh, yeah. a Chiefs team also going to convert on that. So that's why, for me, I'm a little worried about the Bengals. I mean, excuse me, I'm a little worried about the Bills. I think I, I like the Bills. I mean, I like the Bengals. I want to see a Bengals-Chiefs rematch. That's where I think the Chiefs end up winning. I wouldn't be shocked if either happens, but I want to more so see the fallout of what potentially happens in Buffalo if they lose and can't get over the yeah, hump. Do, do they the, panic or do they still say, hey, exactly. we're fine, we're good? Which I think they do that, but you yeah. have to, like I said, have that philosophical change. But that's where I'm, I, I think we all kind of are leaning Bengals, which means probably Bills. But last but not least, Chiefs. I'm leaning Bills, but thanks. Oh, yeah. you are? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that I'll, makes me feel better. Chiefs, Jags. What the fuck's happening? I think the Chiefs win. Bro, uh, it's, it's so easy to say Chiefs, but... Say it was so easy to say the Bengals last year. And we're gonna go get right back, or it was so easy to say the, the Chiefs, Chiefs against, against the, Bengals the Bengals last yeah. year. Nope, you know my thoughts, and I know your thoughts on that. I think the Chiefs win, but if the Jags go in there and Trevor Lawrence balls the fuck out, wins that game, don't I'm not gonna be super shocked. Hey, hey. Here, here's the thing. Well, you want to you want to go in? Jump no, in. I was just gonna say, like Trevor Lawrence has three ints. The Chiefs are gonna convert off that. That's there's, you don't have. Know, there's no room for mistakes. Here. But he, I don't think that that was like a weird standout was, half. Like he doesn't usually do that. that He's done that before. He's well, had yeah, that. so He's is. Had, so is every fucking quarterback. But I'm just saying, in it, in the brightest of lights, if Trevor Lawrence has one int, two ints, it's Trevor. Over. Trevor happen. Lawrence in the brightest of lights. He came in as a true freshman and beat one of the best, if not the best, college football teams of all time to win the I national hear championship. You. I'm just saying, I got the like. I he's he's a big game I performer. Got the Chiefs blowing out the Jags. He's a big game performer, just like Joe Burrow is, and Joe Burrow went into Kansas City, yeah. the most hostile environment in the NFL, and won that shit last Duval's year. Story. I would not be shocked if Trevor Lawrence did the same as the game of his career. Duval's story. Let's ends. also not act like the Chiefs haven't given up big leads. Or they up against the Broncos like twenty four to nothing, and the Broncos came back and made it a fucking game. Bro, last year against the the Bengals in the last AFC Championship, the Bengals, seventeen. Like, this year it's happened like two or three times. Yeah. So I mean, that it, secondary is very gettable without Tyron Matthew now. Yeah, and you know, Mahomes, I wouldn't say he's a turnover prone guy, but you know, it happens too. So I mean, obviously the pieces have to fall in the right place, just like with the Bengals last year was like yeah. everything fell like at the right time, like right place, right time, time type of thing. Uh, it has to happen with the Jags again, which I won't bank on, so I'm going Chiefs. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, I don't think it's going to be a bad game. Here's my thing. is like no doubt in my mind that Mahomes is going to cook against that defense, right? Let's not act like the Chiefs have that great of a defense, too. I think Trevor Lawrence could get hot early, and it's going to be a fucking shootout, like 42 to 38 or some shit like that, like a really, really good game. And look, when it comes to supporting cast, 
uh, at least offensively, Jaguars skill position be- wise. The Chiefs aren't that much. They're not better. I, I mean, think the Jags Travis actually Kelsey. have a better skill position group than Over, the Chiefs. Right. Evan I don't Ingram think that's has, crazy. Evan Ingram has learned how to play football again because he Evan looks Ingram so is good. awesome. Christian Kirk looks great. Zay Jones coming out of nowhere. Marvin Jones had a fucking touchdown Travis last ETN. week. ETN's a beast. Yeah, they got talent, but the story ends. That's my thoughts. But it's it's this. That's what I'm saying. Like right. a I while think, ago, it's the same kind of recipe yeah, that the I'm not Bengals going had. Into my argument again. And we have a Super Bowl winning quarterback that won as kind of an. I know they were the one seed, but they won with a backup quarterback as underdogs that whole playoff. I'm not doing it. I wouldn't be shocked if Doug Peterson, Trevor Lawrence, those Last boys. Last but not out. least. Last but not least. Also, Doug Peterson is an Andy Championship is a product pedigree. of Andy Reid. Yeah. By the way, um, can we as a group power rank the NFL quarterbacks remaining? Oh, let's just power off, rank off the, the dome. Off the as, dome. Let's power rank the quarterbacks nah, remaining. As a group, I'm gonna disagree. Yeah, I know what you put. But it's democracy. Okay, no. you want to go? Go for it. You want to power rank your own? Yeah, do you have a list for me? I do. Power do you have rank a list your own too? quarterbacks. Yeah, okay, I'd like to see that. Let's just do it quickly because we got to wrap up. Oh, and left in the playoffs? Yeah, left in the playoffs. Oh, okay. Patrick. Power ranking. Power ranking the... All right, I'm power ranking the quarterbacks left in the NFL playoffs heading into the divisional round. One, Patrick Mahomes. Two, Joe Burrow. Three, Josh Allen. Four, Dak Prescott. Five, Jalen Hurts. Six, Trevor Lawrence. Seven, Brock Purdy. Eight, Daniel Jones. All right, let me see that shit. Mine is, it's similar. It's similar. All right, Brock Purdy at eight. Disrespectful by JPA football fucking assholes. Yeah. All right, so this is my power ranks of the quarterbacks right now in the playoffs, divisional round. One, Patrick Mahomes. Two, Joe Burrow. Three, Josh Allen. Four, Trevor Lawrence. I knew you were going to say that. You know five, you Jalen Hurts. Six, eh, six, Dak. Hmm, Daniel Jones or Brock? It's tough. Got feeling. Go I'll, for it. I'll go. I'll go. Seven. Daniel Jones. Eight. Brock Purdy. Yeah. Um. Experience. But I, you can interchange those two. Experience. And that's not. That is nothing. No dig on either of those guys because yeah. they're one of the last eight I quarterbacks like both remaining. Of them. I think you guys have good power rankings. What's yours? My power rankings. If I had to rank the remaining <laughs> quarterbacks, yeah, you're not just gonna. Us. Well, I think power ranking the remaining quarterbacks in the playoffs. Mahomes one. Josh Allen two. I still put Josh Allen two. Three. Joe Burrow. Four. I would go Jalen Hurts. I would. Ag- I would agree with this list. Honestly. Five, I go Dak. Six, I go Trevor Lawrence. Seven, Daniel Jones. Eight, Brock Birdie. Nine, two. That's not bad. Hey, we got to put a bet on for this game, too. Niners, Cowboys. That's a good point. Niners, Cowboys, what's the bet? Fucking. So, we, 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 we like food around here. So I was thinking maybe um, a nice little steak dinner. Ooh, Because I won't do I like an ass tat. I know Jack loves ass tats, but Ooh. I won't do the ass tat. Like I would do an ass tat. Yeah, I ain't doing it, though. <laughs> but uh, food is good. A little steak like food. dinner, maybe? Steak dinner. Yeah. We were try- we, see, we never got a steak dinner because none of us went perfect for the year. I'm down with that. So steak dinner, how does that work? Loser pays. Loser you, pays? You and Matan. How do I get it? Loser pays. Pays. You and Matan okay. choose a side. Okay. Do we fight? Do, what do we have to do? To, I, how feel do like we... Matan, I feel like you have to give Matan 49ers because he's a Giants fan. That's true. I feel okay, like you let's almost ride, have to. bro. Let's ride, baby. Let's ride. Uh, <laughs> reaching that. Let's read. Yeah. Cowboys so country. Warm. All right, so Cowboys if, if the Cowboys win, Cowboys Nation, if the ride. Cowboys win, Felipe and I will have a steak dinner paid for by you and Matan. Yeah. And if the Niners win, we will we'll pay, pay for your for steak dinner. dinner. Yeah, I can't wait. That's going to be – the best steak is free steak, bro. I can't wait. Whew. Should we choose a location, like, pre? Nah. Or, like, we'll STK, figure maybe? We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll document the whole thing. But, hey, All good right. luck. Smith and Walensky? All right. We, remember, we're going live at Overlook NYC. On Sunday for the divisional game, Bills Bengals. So you can check that out. Link in our bio. Find out all the information. You could RSVP there. Also, follow us on TikTok, Caps Off Podcast. Follow us on Instagram, Caps Off Pod. Hit that uh, hit the link in bio. Also, join our Discord. Come shoot the shit with us. We'll and come to the Caps Off live event, January twenty second, Sunday. That's this divisional round weekend on Sunday. You gotta be twenty one. So if you're not twenty one, I'm sorry because we get a really good to fake say ID. that in the past or do what Jack just said. Jack, can you say that again? It'll get a really good fake ID. Yeah. See, I'm not gonna say it. But uh, <laughs> that could possibly work. But I just Shout don't want Maryland. you to come out of your way and not be able to get in because we want all y'all to be there and, and, and we love you guys. We're also going to live stream it too. It's going to be on YouTube. So if you're not able to be there, uh, you're going to be able to live stream it. And well, I like, just said that. You just drink like a virtual beer. So. Or a real one. Or a real one. You did say that. I did yeah. say that. But I'm just emphasizing. Yeah, no, thanks. All right, thanks, guys. All right, we'll see you later. Love oh, you. guys, by the way, we have a uh, live event, if you didn't know. January okay. 22nd, Division. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Disagree with any of these takes? Let us know in the comments. Remember to like, subscribe, and for all your betting needs, go to thegameday.com.